Hello my friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA results, predicted phenotype and ethnicity calculator results of a medieval South Slav from Bitola in North Macedonia. This individual was a woman, she had mitochondrial lineage H1, she lived in the 9th to 11th century AD, which is the medieval period in Europe, and um, in terms of G25, uh, with G25, she most closely resembles Romanians, Serbs, Montenegrins, Moldovans, Bosniaks, Bulgarians, uh, basically various Balkan people. Let's go ahead and look and check what she scores with my trade predictor. We're going to start with the ethnic calculator results. So for the ethnic calculator results, she seems to be closest to Russians, modern Russians. Followed by that are Slavic mercenaries from Himera, followed by that are Finnish people. Speaking of two corded wear from Lithuania, Belvikers, uh, Sungir VI, which is um, which is a medieval person from Kievan Rus. Then come Bulgarians, then come Livonians from Estonia, then come Global or Amphora culture. So it looks like she's actually a lot closer to uh, Russians than she is to Bulgarians. So let's compare the distances, right? So to Russians, there's a distance of 003 to Bulgarians. Uh, 008, so more than two times closer to Russians than to Bulgarians with my calculator. Very interesting. Then again, uh, this calculation was done with 383 SNPs, so not a lot of SNPs went into this calculation. Let's keep that in mind. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and check what she scores for Nashakot. Uh, and it seems that with Nashakot, she is scoring hazel eyes, either hazel or light brown eyes for the most part. The likelihood of blue eyes is really low, dark brown eyes really low. For hair color, it looks like she's got brown hair. Once again, the likelihood of any kind of blonde or red hair is really low. And for skin color, it looks like she's got light or fair skin. And the, li the likelihood of brown skin for her is once again really low. For hair texture, it looks like she's got straight or wavy hair. Uh, curly is also possible, but not as likely, most likely straight. Or wavy uh, and definitely not kinky hair okay so let's go ahead and check what contributed to the phenotype result so she's heterozygous for blue eye haplotype 2 very interesting however she has this genotype which is typically predictive of not having blue eye haplotype 2 so there is definitely at least one dislinkage here she's got this genotype which is predictive of heterozygous genotype for blue eye haplotype 2 okay but she actually has blue eye haplotype 3 which is really confusing I actually don't know uh, how she has blue eye haplotype 3 while having heterozygous genotype for blue eye haplotype 2 because these two variations are really really low really really close to each other they're located like right next to each other and um, the phylogeny is such that to have BH3 you need to have BH2 so it's really surprising that she has BH3 without having um, homozygous genotype for BH2 very interesting and you know blue apple type 3 that contributed to her scoring such a high such a um, light score for eye color so we see for eye color she's scoring mostly hazel right so that's because she has bh3 if she didn't have bh3 the score would be very different let's go ahead and check her polygenic risk scores now so it looks like for the polygenic risk scores she's got a very low score for schizophrenia she's got pretty much average score for type 2 diabetes and below average excuse me, <coughs> and uh, below average score for Alzheimer's. For cancers, it looks like she's got two risk variants for breast cancer out of eight. It's not a very high quality file, so there's only eight variants in total here. Not a lot to go off of. Uh, nine risk variants for testicular cancer out of 14, which is once again really impressive. It's really impressive in a bad way, but then again, it's not a very high quality file. With better quality files, you will see a lot more than 14 variants in total. For celiac disease, disease section, she's got two risk variants for the celiac disease out of eight. Once again, not a very high quality prediction. I can't really say anything about it. For GSS, zero risk variants out of four. Really good to see. And for Crohn's disease, three risk variants out of 16. I guess, I guess 16 is pretty decent coverage, but still not really as good as I'd like to see. And three risk variants out of 16 is really typical, really normal, normal genotype. All right, we're gonna go ahead and look at her monogenic traits. 
all right so for the monogenic traits it looks like she's got ag in comp and T tg so heterozygous is genotype in both comp and maoa is warrior versus warrior variation so intermediate uh, phenotype between the warrior and the warrior phenotypes to derive no goal learner variants in DRD2 pro in pro variation, which means less dopamine to receptor sites availability, which means reduction in the risk of schizophrenia, increased likelihood of no goal learning, and it's an extremely European genotype once again. Um, it looks like she does not have long form 5-HTTLPR, she's got short form 5-HTTLPR, she does not have any Euro um, derived variants for European lactose persistence, so if she took an ancestry DNA test, it would say, hey, you're lactose intolerant. For the empathy gene, it looks like she's got this genotype, which is associated with the increased OXTR expression and higher levels of empathy, so she's more of an empath than a sociopath. Really good to see. Uh, for diabetes, it looks like she does not have type 1 diabetes. Really good to see once again. For Alzheimer's, no risk alleles in APOE, in APOE, which is very good to see. Once again, APOE is by far the most important gene when it comes to Alzheimer's prediction. Um... No micro P, really good. You know what micro P is. In case you don't know what micro P is, uh, enhance the video quality and put it on pause and read it. I can't spell it out for you because of YouTube and their rules, you know. Uh, it looks like she's got one fat gene variant and FTOs RS9939609, really good. So slightly higher odds of obesity and sleep apnea. Although, you know, it's slightly higher odds relative to not having any fat gene variants, right? Uh, and I think the average person has like one. So it's pretty much average. Typical genotype. Um, no variance for increased pain sensitivity in SCN9A. And no East Asian EDAR either. Okay. Um, she's got this extreme genotype in, FT in MTHFR. This is, um, this is one of the more important variations in MTHFR as far as I know. And it's like scientifically backed. There's a lot of stats backing it, and it's pretty extreme. I mean, 10 to 20 percent efficiency in processing folic acid is like it, it's really extreme. I don't know what the implications of that are, uh, like being really inefficient and in processing folic acid, but uh, it does lead to high odds for a variety of illnesses from autism to coronary heart disease. And like, there's stuff like schizophrenia there, there's all kinds of things. Uh, it does not affect the schizophrenia score, though, on my calculation. And then again, she's got this genotype, once again, an MTHFR, which leads, which is a common genotype and leads to slightly higher than average blood pressure. Really interesting to see. All right. Um, for leukemia, it looks like she's got lower risk of leukemia. That's good to see. And when it comes to celiac disease, she's got two risk variants, and these are the risk variants. This one and this one. I think I've seen this before in the, in the previous um, Balkan Slav I did. This this result actually looks a lot similar to the the result of the previous Balkan Slav. For allergies panel, it looks like she's got slightly higher odds of allergies of peanut butter allergies. Very interesting. And for Crohn's disease, it looks like she's got typical or lower risk score for Crohn's disease. Uh, on Crohn's disease, I have uh, only three variations here that show up on the screen. But as you can see, in the polygenic risk score. And there's a lot more for Crohn's disease. There's out of 16 here, but there's actually even more if you um, if you have a file with proper coverage. The thing is, I only put the important, the really important and uh, scientifically backed variations here on the screen for you guys to see. A lot of the unimportant stuff or the stuff that's difficult to explain goes goes on behind the screen, so you don't see it. But for Crohn's disease, this is by far the more the most important. Uh, s and with the highest contribution to the risk score. And she's got typical over risk score for Crohn's disease if you look at her genotype here. So that's good. And zero risk variance for Canavan syndrome. Once again, really good. Um, in case you don't know what Canavan syndrome, it's like a neurodegenerative disease where your muscles just kind of die. And uh, it's it's like really slow and, and unpleasant death. Well, thanks for watching until the end. By the way, check out the dark mode. Isn't that beautiful? I don't know. I don't... Uh, I've shown it to my mom, she doesn't really like it, she says that it was useless uh, adding a dark mode, but I feel like some people might find it better, enjoy it more. Anyway, thanks for watching, you can download the file in 23andMe format from link which is in the description of the video, and leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy my content, goodbye.